week five producing tables. Let's jump to R. As always, I have a script prepared here for this week. We're going to produce some tables. I have some stuff still loaded from previous sessions. So actually, I want to introduce one command to you, which is useful. It just clears out the whole history, clears out the environment, and you can start from fresh. And the command is uh, remove right list equals to list empty brackets and this should delete the whole history and environment right we can comment this out meaning that r won't run it the next time we use this script we're going to go ahead and install a bunch of user written packages that we need for the tables here i'm going to show you different ways of producing tables and they require each different packages uh, you've already uh, seen the janitor package in previous um, in previous sessions. We're also going to go ahead and install the flex table uh, package, the tidyverse you already know, and we also install the GT summary package. And we're going to use different functions from those packages throughout. All right. Again, as always, let's set the working directory where our files are, and we're going to import the student data set. We're going to import the student data set into our R environment. There it is. We're back to the thousand students, uh, 23 variables. So let's go ahead and just produce a simple one-way frequency table. Well, one way to do that is to just think about table uh, producing a simple table of a one variable with the table function you've already seen. We've used this function to just look at a variable and see you know, how many people fall into each category, for example, right? Like, for example, for the sex variable, how many female and male students are there? We can use the table function to do that, right? Um, and if you just run the table function, right, you get a simple frequency distribution um, of our students. There are 447 female students in our data set. Now, you can turn this little frequency table, if you will, into a data frame. Right? with the function as data frame. And you call, we're going to save this in object tab one underscore one. So if you create this data frame, you go to it, now you see it's just whatever the output was of the table function is now converted into an actual data frame. And um, now you can go ahead with the flex table package and actually um, convert this into a flex table object, right? So this is a little bit more formatted and a little nicer looking, right? Um, you can also save it. You override it in the tab one underscore one with the flex table function. And now you have it here saved. Note that it looks a little different now because the type of object has changed. It's now a flex table object, which is organized differently um, rather than a data frame. It's not a data frame anymore. It's a flex table object. With the flex table function, we can also label the headers, right? Set header label is a, is a particular function from the flex table package. We tell uh, R which flex table object we would like to change. And then we set the headers, rename them like this, var1 equals respondent sex in quotation comma. The frec variable column is now named observations. If we run that, uh, and look at the object again, we'll see it looks a little nicer, right? So here we have our first univariate um, table that we produced um, just based on a simple frequency table of one variable. Well, the second approach I'm going to teach you to do the basic, the, the same thing, it just looks a little nicer, is the table, um, table package from the janitor, right? The table function, I should say. So here we're going to have the typical tidyverse approach of piping, right? So first we're going to call on the student's data set and then we're going to apply the table function to sex. We're going to save that in tab one underscore two. So this is what that looks like now. Um, as you see, we have a little bit more information here. We also have the percent immediately. Uh, we didn't have that in the normal table function, right? So some additional functionality here, we get the normal number of observations, but we immediately also get a percent variable. And um, we can also exclude the missing values here with the option comma show and a equals false. And then we can apply the same flex table function to that new object here. We do that, we'll see 
we now not only have the observations, but we also have the percent included. All right. The third way to do the same thing is using the GT summary package. It's actually, it's one of my favorites. It's, it's fairly recent and it provides a lot of shortcuts and make things look a little better. So you can, again, here, take the student's data set, only keep one variable, which is the sex variable that we're interested in here, and then just do the TBL underscore summary command with empty brackets, which means do this, apply this function to whatever is left in the data set. Let's go ahead and run that. It saves a new object here, tab one underscore three, and it's a large table summary object, right? It's not a data frame. It's a new type of object here. That's why it looks a little weird. It includes several lists and so forth. But if we run it, we have a new table in the output window here in the viewer. We can also zoom in and enlarge this. And it's a, it's a ready-made formatted uh, summary table, actually, or frequency table in this case. We have the variable sex, we have females, there are 447 stu uh, female students, and we have the males. And we also have the um, percentage distribution here and how many are missing, right? We also know how many students there are in total. So it's sort of a standard way, uh, um, standard customized format a table that, that, that already provides you simple functionality. Now we can also exclude the missings here with the TBL missing equals no uh, option within the parentheses. If we do that and output it, um, it looks a little nicer because the missings are gone. Now, since we save this in a new object, which is not a, a a table, a data frame, or a table as such, or a visual, it's actually saved in a different type of format, a TBL summary format. And this is why you need to call on the object in the R script and execute it for it to produce the visual, which is then shown here in the viewer, right? And actually, in the later session, I will show you how to then take this visual and report it, include it in a Word file or a PDF file or an HTML file, and actually share it with others.